Hello everyone, this is Derek with Reef Automation. This is another Neptune Systems tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna go over how I go about swapping water between two fish tanks that are remotely located. So I have a 100 gallon reef tank in one side of my house and I have a small nano tank in my office. And I made the decision that I'd like to only monitor and control one tank. So what I ended up doing is installing a couple products and I'm going to go over each one and how I programmed it so that both of the tanks share the same water and therefore I only have to manage one tank. This could be useful in a remote frag tank. This could be useful maybe in a remote, uh, just an, another remote tank where you just want fish, for example. Let's get started. So first of all, what I've done is I have two tanks, my reef tank, which is on the left side here, and my office tank which is labeled office and in the office tank I have a salinity probe a pH probe and a temperature probe just so I can monitor what's going on in there I also have an EB4 that allows me to turn off and on the pump the wave uh, there was also an additional heater in the small tank just in case the water was to get cold um, and also I have a light in there as well so I have two separate systems however they share the same water and they do that by using the reef swap and the office swap. And it also has to maintain uh, salinity and it also has to maintain its top off um, for when it loses uh, water. So let's show you how we do this. So the first thing you wanna do is you need to have a pump that will send water from one side of the house. And what you wanna do is you want to have something that can push that kind of water. So in this case, I'm using liter meter pumps. And you can buy a liter meter pump and just plug it into an outlet, which is what I'm doing. And I've labeled those two outlets, reef swap and office swap. So what I have here is reef swap, which will send water to the reef tank to the office tank, and the office swap will send water from the office to the reef tank. So let's show you how that's done. So if we go to the reef swap, you will see I have a number of different things here. First of all, of course, we wanna have fallback off because we don't want that pump to turn on in case of any type of outage um, from the APEX system. We don't want that to uh, ever send water because you need to make sure that it doesn't obviously take over. So in this case, I have three sensors. I have a sensor in the office tank, and you could do it from either side, but I found that the office tank, which does not have the auto top off sensor, um, is easier to do. I have a high sensor, I have a middle sensor, and I have a low sensor. So how this works is if the office middle sensor is closed, which means it has water, it's going to automatically shut off the reef swap. Now what that means is the water is going to come from the reef, and go into the office and once it reaches the office mid it's going to shut off and how i have it working is i so i have an oscillator here and what's going to happen is for the first five minutes on the hour it's going to turn on it's going to stay on until the mid has been reached so what that means is the reef swap pump is going to stay on until the middle sensor is reached and therefore then it's going to turn off it is then going to continue to stay off for 10 minutes, regardless of the sensor here. And that is how it works. You'll see I have additional things here, such as my office high, my office pump, if my office is in maintenance, if there's a leak, I want you to shut it off. There's a number of things here, just to make sure that if the office high sensor is high, that it shuts off automatically, so that way it doesn't flood my office. I set it defer to 15 seconds. I felt that that was the, the easiest way to do it. And that's how the water then gets sent to the reef swap pump. Now, if we go back to the office swap pump, it is essentially the opposite. So we'll go to the office swap. And in this case, we want it to turn on when the other one is not on. At 12.05, it's gonna turn on, and then it's gonna turn off at 12.10. So it's only gonna be on for that period of time. And it's only, going to turn on as long as office low is off. Now what that means is if there is water already in the tank, 
that's in the back from the middle sensor from the reef swap, it's going to turn this on until the low sensor is met. Once the low sensor is met, it's then going to shut it off. So basically what is this is doing is it's sending water for five minutes to one tank and then it's sending water back from one tank to the other tank on the next five minutes and it monitors that based off of sensors. And that's how that works. Now you're probably wondering, well, what about when we have evaporation? So that is the reef ATO. Now, what we do with the reef ATO is we just have it on whenever the swaps are off. So whenever the swaps are not doing anything, meaning one went and then the other one went, it's going to then run like a normal auto top off. So you'll see right here, if outlet reef swap is on and if office swap is on, I want you to turn off my ATO pump. Therefore, the ATO will never work when the swaps are being done. Once the swaps have been completed, it then takes a look at the middle sensor inside the reef tank sump. And also in the reef tank sump, um, it monitors, of course, if the skimmer is off, I want you to turn it off and so forth, just like a standard ATO pump. Um, so again, you're gonna need three sensors on one of the tanks, which monitor the low, medium, and of course I would recommend it high. You don't really need the high sensor, but that's just in case, just to make sure it doesn't overflow. And then on the reef tank or the other tank, in my case, you can have also three sensors, again, a low, medium, and high, but it's only gonna use the medium sensor because it's only really getting uh, information from the one tank's sensor. And it's always gonna be the same amount of water every time. So hopefully this explained how I go about doing my swaps between two tanks. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. Hopefully you liked this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.